The Irish Christian Brothers arrived in India in 1890, and since then they have left a distinctive mark on the educational map of the country. The schools they ran became recognised as value-based and high-quality institutions. Many of our more notable citizens, industrialists, politicians, dramatists, sportsmen, artists and businessmen, trace their formative roots to a Christian Brothers school. Most of these alumni look back on their younger days with nostalgia and recall the idiosyncrasies as well as, emphatically, the dedication of their teachers with fond appreciation. Many ex-students return to their alma maters to relive memories of their school days. They are often disappointed, however, not to find any more smiling Irish faces to greet them in their familiar accents. In many schools today, even the person behind the principal's desk is not a Christian brother. This lack of Christian brother presence in traditional CB institutions has provoked many an alumnus to wonder about the shrinkage in the numbers of brothers in the institutions to which the brothers themselves have given a reputed name. There has been talk that the brothers have moved to areas of greater poverty and deprivation so as to be relevant to the needs of the country at this time. Two Calcutta-based ex-pupils, who wish to remain anonymous, decided to go and see for themselves what exactly the brothers were doing. They motored from Calcutta, covering Asansol on the Bihar border, and then northeast to the state of Arunachal Pradesh. They returned via Meghalaya, a state adjacent to Arunachal in the north, and then Kursiang beside Darjeeling to Calcutta, a trip of more than 4,000 kilometers spread over two weeks. This little documentary is the story of what they discovered about the Christian brothers of today. They have been so moved by the total experience that they insist on sharing it with others who cherish similar association with the Christian Brothers. Nestled in the hills of distant Arunachal Pradesh, at the edge of our civilization, is an Amoriam mission, Sangram. The Brothers came here in 1999 to work among the Nishi community, where the literacy rates, life expectancy, and the general condition, especially of women folk, were abysmal. That was 14 years ago. Today, a high school, a community health project, and a social development program have transformed Sangram into a much healthier and happier place. <laughs> They recognized that the hard work of the brothers and their professional collaborators have yielded gratifying and even amazing results. My name is Talar Bama and I'm here today because of the Christian brothers who have brought such a good school in our place. 
our parents have no education at all. And this time we got a chance to show other people that we are a person who have also got a talent. Here's Nungram Devi as she speaks of how her life has changed since the arrival of the Christian brothers. <laughs> Christian brothers so kam tam teta ha pa ho male ngam kam teacher kam ngam ji pa ho mu hara be mu school kam poi jabe puriya mas tu heb je kamara christian brothers se ngam hara be teacher jo kam amara ji pa teacher kam ngam ji lila ngam hara hud ku ngam puri hara puri di te mu pa ho ge ngam hara be so ga lung kita diam ching mu pa mu pa ho ge mu christian brothers sam mo ko jabe malam pa ya ga di kune Far from Sangram, in what is called the Scotland of the East, lies the expansive and beautiful St. Edmund's Shillong Megalaya. On that one campus are educated over 5,000 students from kindergarten to post-graduation and from formal schooling to residential institutes for people who are challenged visually, orally, mentally. In the year 2000, a new project on the St. Edmunds campus for poorer children who could not avail of normal education was started under the name Providence. Today, more than 200 girls and boys, aged between 5 and 18 years, experiment with a wide variety of trades, and so discover their individual aptitudes towards earning a living for themselves later on, while at the same time completing their formal schooling. Uh, we begin school at 8.30, and then we start with the vocational trades till 10 o'clock, like um, cooking, confectionery, beauty care, uh, carpentry, plumbing, electricity, ele electronic repairs, motor mechanic repairs, and uh, a few more. Then the academics begin from 10.30 to quarter to four. Uh, we begin with the KGs, and then we have a class, a present in class nine, and then from there we uh, do the uh, national high school exam. with uh, five kids and then today we have uh, 300. My name is Parsha Fadakla. I am 19 years old. I've been in Providence for six years. Uh, Providence is a very good, nice school that I've been. Uh, Providence taught us lots of trades like confectionery, cooking, knitting, tailoring, beauty care and candle making. The most trade that I really like to do is confectionery and I employed as a baker in a little chef bakery in Namkra. It is because of Providence School, most of the poor children are getting opportunities to, to get educated. Miraculously, all the students are educated and fed free. And Providence never runs short. The incessant demand for Christian Brother education has taken the brothers most recently to Warinang in the West Kasi Hills district of Meghalaya. Three of our men have been living in a makeshift house there, learning the language and local protocols and carrying out a needs assessment. KG classes have begun. The majestic Gothals Memorial School in Kershyang, near Darjeeling, has been the training ground of many a sports lover 
including three Olympic gold medalists. Given its locale, this boarding school catered, naturally, to boys of middle and upper middle classes. However, in 2001, the brothers opened a National Open School, NOS, centre for dropout schoolgirls and boys from the locality. It soon became evident that teenage girls from poorer families, and consequently not in school, were the more vulnerable group. And so from 2007, the programme concentrated on them. This is called the Edmund Rice Free School. I was born and brought up in a very poor family. My father was a drunkard. Because of my father, my mother left us and, and I, I started living with my uncle and aunt. And I was studying in, a, my, in my previous school. I failed in class five. I, I wasted my two years. After two years, I came to know about this school. Then I came, I came here to study. I came here in 2011. Even though I do not to speak, I do not know to speak in English, I have learned many things in this school, so I am very thankful to this school. Because of financial problem, they could not go to other schools, and school has provided them free vehicles. So because of that, from far distance also girls are coming and uh, coming for the education. Beside that, school has provided them lunch. For this, like most of the girls, uh, like in the morning, they come without breakfast. मैं जब कहते हैं नौ दस साल का था तब मैं दिल्ली काम पे निकली गया घर पे बहुत सारी प्रॉब्लम हो रहा था भाई बहन सब पढ़ रहा था तो उसके उसके पैसे मम्मी को सपोर्ट करने के लिए पैसे बेचना था और मेरे पापा तो बहुत पहले ही गुजर गए हैं इसलिए कहते हैं घर पे बहुत सारी प्रॉब्लम था इसलिए मेरे भाई बहन भी बहुत ज़्यादा पढ़ रहा था मैं भी पढ़ रही थी बस थ्री क्लास ही पढ़ रही थी बस तीन क्लास इफ द एटमन राइस फ्री प्रोजेक्ट वर नॉट देयर देन द गर्ल्स वुड नॉट बी एबल टू कम्प्लीट द एजुकेशन Uh, like they uh, they can be engaged in other trades like sex exploitation, uh, human trafficking, and uh, uh, early marriage. Today, more than a hundred such girls are completing their National Indian Open School, NIOS, Class 10 and Class 12, and are thus being equipped to deal with their lives more independently than ever before. So, girls from our schools. Uh, like uh, after completing their education, I have seen them working as a teacher in Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, and some of them are working as a sales girls in Dubai, and some of them are working as a uh, working in malls and all. So I'm really happy, uh, happy for these girls, and thankful for the project. Hi, my name is Rasna Rai, and I'm 19 years old. I'm the ex student of this Edmund Rice Free School and I'm very thankful to all uh, my teachers and my brothers who gave me such an opportunity to learn something which helped me a lot in my future and uh, now I'm a teacher in Margaret Stoke Grace Academy English School. In Asansol, West Bengal, Two vast campuses comprise St. Patrick's and St. Vincent's institutions. Here, many needy children and young adults are being given a new lease of life, thanks to the Christian brothers. Here's a brother on campus to talk about it. In the city of Asansol, the Christian brothers cater to the need of over 6,000 students. We have two high schools, a school for street children, a center for the National Open School and as well as a technical school. While the two high schools, St. Patrick's and St. Vincent's, are well established, well running, they are managed today by lay people. All the other projects are where the Christian brothers spend their time and energy. Uh, the technical school uh, uh, caters to the needs of over 200 students. Uh, we teach skills, skills like welding, uh, electrician, motor mechanics, uh, two-wheeler repairs, carpentry, uh, computers, computer hardware. Uh, a lot of dropout students enter this system and they train out here, they get a skill and after that, after to get their, getting their training, they get out and into the workplace where they earn a living. So this is an end school for them. My name is Joyspin Kachyap. I am a person who lives in Asansol and I am a person who lives in a poor house. My mother works in a poor house. 
और मैं उनके लिए मदद करना चाहती हूँ कि मैं इलेक्ट्रिकल करके ताकि उन्हें वो काम करने की आवश्यकता ना पड़े मेरा नाम शुभंकर है हम कोलकाता साउथ बाड़ीपुर से आए हुए हैं हमको सिस्टर लोग भेजा है मिशनरी ऑफ चैरिटी हम यहाँ पे बदल राज का हॉस्टल में रहते हैं हमको सब कुछ फ्री में मिलता है एंड हमको आई का चांस दिया इलेक्ट्रीसियन आई में इसीलिए मैं अपना भविष्य तैयार कर सकता हूँ पहले हमको फ्यूचर मारने का कोई ये नहीं था क्योंकि हम माध्यमिक पास है प्लस टेन तक पढ़े हुए हैं उससे ज़्यादा पढ़ने का मेरा क्षमता नहीं था पैसा नहीं था इसलिए हम लोग पढ़ाई बंद कर दिए थे ऑन सेंट पैट्रिक्स कैंपस वी रन अ स्कूल फॉर स्ट्रीट चिल्ड्रेन दिस इज कॉल्ड नाया दिशा एंड मेनी ऑफ दोज चिल्ड्रेन आफ्टर स्पेंडिंग अ फ्यू ईयर्स इन दैट स्कूल एंटर आ एन एन आई ओ एस और एन ओपन स्कूल सेंटर एंड फाइनली डू अ क्लास टेन मेरा नाम पूनम विश्वकर्मा है और मैं यहाँ पर 2001 से थी मैं पहले यहाँ एडमिन राइस फ्री स्कूल में पढ़ी फाइव तक एट तक कंप्लीट करके फिर एन में टेन पास किया एच पास किया अभी मैं बीबी कॉलेज में ग्रेजुएशन कंप्लीट हो गया है मेरा अब मैं एम में एडमिशन लूँगी इसके अलावा मैंने यहाँ पर कुकिंग नीटिंग और कंप्यूटर सीखा है We have a center for a national open school which has caters to about 1,500 students. Here again, they have come from the formal school for some reason or the other. They are unable to complete their schooling there. Maybe they failed a class. Maybe they are sick. Maybe they have some financial problems. And they come here. We run classes for class 10 and class 12. After this, they are eligible to get into any university in India. और ब्रदर राज और यहाँ पर जितने भी ब्रदर हैं मैं उनको बहुत बहुत थैंक्स कहना चाहूँगी क्योंकि मैं आज जो भी हूँ यहाँ तक पहुँची उन्हीं के बदौलत क्योंकि अगर मैं मैं ये इंस्टीट्यूट नहीं होता ये स्कूल नहीं होता तो शायद मैं आज नहीं पढ़ पाती यहाँ तक नहीं पहुँच पाती The Christian Brothers in Calcutta have been involved with the poor from the very beginning more than a hundred years ago. Thousands of such boys and now girls too have been educated in St George's School. The brothers felt that even this wasn't enough. So to respond to the children of the migrant population living in the surrounding lanes, the brothers in 1994 opened Ashirvad Vidyalaya. These youngsters do their NIOS class 10 here in Hindi and then go to St Mary's Orphanage Dum Dum. a 15 minute trip north by the underground metro rail to pursue their 12s this is my house where i grown up where i've grown up this is a place uh, where my father and my uncle work for their livelihood we do ironing i got uh, admitted into brothers school in uh, st george's over there i did my secondary schooling After finishing my secondary schooling, I got opportunity to get admitted to the uh, other brother schools in Dum Dum, which is known as Saint Mary's Dum Dum. I got into hotel management because brothers uh, they managed to get the fund from the well wishers of Saint Mary's. At a first look, people doubt that how can I work in a hotel industry and that also in kitchen. This is a disability which I have grown up with. now i don't feel that this is a disability for me i i make my problem into my power my exceptional power i can say that yes there are people who do work but yes i'm competing with them for that i'm very proud i'm really happy because right now i'm doing what i wanted uh, what i always wanted to do so now i'm a chef i i can proudly say yes i am a chef and i'm working in a good company St George's was earlier funded by an international organization but over the last 10 years the brothers have had to manage through other resources St Mary's orphanage the SMO has similarly served many a poor lad and set his feet on the road to achievement listen to one such former student tell his tale i came from a very uh, ordinary background i stayed in a basti and uh, you know we had a small place uh, where 14 families used to stay together and each family had about 10 members my family itself we were sharing a room of, a room of uh, you know 8 by 8 and there were about 6 of us staying in that room and the other families which had about 10 12 people we had three bathrooms to share 
So you know, just coming from that kind of a background into a place like this where it's absolutely open, it's green, you play around and you know. So I'm very grateful to the Christian Brothers and to St. Mary's Orphanage, uh, where I grew up from. And you know, they taught me everything, you know, not just educations. This is now I run a company uh, where we employ more than uh, 3,500 people. We give them jobs, we, you know, uh, uh, you know, can look after them, guide them in their career and stuff like that. And this has all happened because of the kind of education that I've had from the Krishna Brothers. All I want to say is, sirs, you have done a fantastic job. Thank you so much. When the SMO closed its boarding facilities in 2003, the Brothers in St. Mary's, accompanied by volunteers, opened an NOS tutorial class for the youngsters from Ashirvad Vidyalaya and St. George's. This initiative is flourishing today. And since 2012, 130 wholesome meals are provided every evening for the homeless street dwellers around Dum Dum Station, with the brothers themselves in constant attendance. In 2005, another such venture called the Mary Rice Special Education Centre for students with physical and mental disabilities was open on the Dum Dum campus in honour of Edmund's spastic daughter Mary. And in 2007, the Lotus Project for the Children of Commercial Sex Workers was begun to provide them a safe and nurturing environment. The Christian Brothers continue to discern and be relevant to the changing times and provide for disadvantaged youngsters in many ways. What has been presented in this short documentary is the work being done in only one part of the country. Other projects are being pursued elsewhere in India. The makers of this movie were honoured to see such great work at first hand and they wish to help spread the message of the Christian Brother projects worldwide. They also invite those of you who feel as blessed as they do for having received a Christian Brother education to help support it in whatever way you can. They are proud to be Christian Brother alumni and they wish many other people in India, particularly those who are poor, deprived and disadvantaged, to have the opportunity to share their pride.